This afternoon, we honor Air Force Lieutenant Colonel and astronaut Edward White, USMA class of 1952 and the first American to walk in space. At this time, please direct your attention to the video screen for a short video presentation about Lieutenant Colonel White. Edward Higgins White II, born in San Antonio, Texas, November 14, 1930, was destined to become a hero of the American space program. With a bachelor's degree from West Point and a master's from the University of Michigan, White's military career was spent in the air, from Florida to Germany, from Edwards Air Force Base to Wright-Patterson. As a test pilot, Ed White brought the right stuff. The 1950s and 1960s brought about a race that would change humanity forever. White, along with such noteworthy names as Shepard, Glenn, Collins, Armstrong, Aldrin, were members of these early groups of pilots turned astronauts, some of whom were also West Point grads. We kind of called him a straight arrow, and that, that's what he was. He was directed toward what the objective uh, really was. After humankind reached space in 1961, the race continued. What would it take to exit the craft, to step out, to survive in a small, single-person spacecraft, the spacesuit in this vacuum of space? June 3, 1965, on a launch pad in Florida, Ed White and James McDivitt suited up to find out. At 2.46 p.m. Eastern Time, Ed White stepped out of Gemini 4, becoming the first American to exit a spacecraft in orbit and walk in space, and the first human to control his own movement via pressurized air. Step on, it's very easy to maneuver with the gun. The only problem I have is I haven't got enough fuel. It was space euphoria, I think, from Ed and Jim McDivitt to everyone on the ground and mission control everybody. I mean, it was spectacular. The Gemini program was a brilliant success, with its purpose being that of a proving ground that would take humankind to the moon and back. On January 27, 1967, at the now-named Kennedy Space Center, astronauts Ed White, Virgil Grissom, and Roger Chaffee climbed aboard an Apollo capsule for pre-flight testing. Tragedy struck, taking the lives of these three brave men. The nation mourned its heroes and continues to remember Edward White and the other members of the astronaut corps who have lost their lives in the service to the cause. With each successful push of the boundaries of human exploration, Ed White's memory and legacy is honored. With his spacewalk, White ushered in a dominance of American space technology that has continued beyond that first jaunt to the moon, to Skylab, the shuttle program, servicing Hubble, building the International Space Station. Today, station, much like the Gemini program of the 1960s, stands as part of a proving ground for the next giant leap as we journey to Mars. Ed White is a name that will forever ring in human history. And it was Ed that said, This is the greatest experience I've just remember. Ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker this afternoon currently serves as the Director for Safety and Mission Assurance, Johnson Space Center, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. He is a West Point graduate who began his career with NASA in 1987 as a space shuttle vehicle test engineer and became an astronaut a few years later. He is a veteran of four space flights, logging more than 224 days in space. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome retired Army Colonel William MacArthur. Thank you, Sergeant Sparrow. <clears throat> Mrs. Bear, General Caslin, Colonel Borman, honored guests. The Ambassador of Exploration Award recognizes the sacrifices and dedication 
of the Apollo, Gemini, and Mercury astronauts. Each astronaut or their surviving families were presented a lunar sample to be publicly displayed in their name to help inspire a new generation of explorers. Ed White's award is part of the 842 pounds of moon rocks and, and soil returned during the six lunar expeditions from 1969 to 1972, and for this award specifically on Apollo 15. As the first American to walk in space, how did Ed's 21-minute EVA inspire those who followed in his footsteps? Simply stated, 50 years ago today, he proved that human beings can operate in the airless, weightless environment of space, a capability essential if we aspire to explore, work, and live beyond the surface of our planet. More than that, he proved that the capability of men and women to meet and conquer daunting challenges is boundless. Since that historic event 50 years ago, the history of U.S. spaceflight includes 231 additional EVAs, extravehicular activities, and counting, um, and counting. Building from Ed's first spacewalk, we now have an international space station that is our springboard to the rest of the solar system. Construction of the International Space Station has required astronauts to spend more than 900 hours on 140 spacewalks outside the station, assembling the most complex international scientific and engineering project in human history and the largest structure that humans have ever put into space. Before my first spacewalk, my daughters asked, Dad, are you scared? I said, no, dears. How can I be scared when I can stand on the shoulders of giants? And Ed was a consummate astronaut, so skilled and confident that his main concern was that his time outside was too short. He remarked at the end of his spacewalk, I'm coming back in, and it's the saddest moment of my life. It's fitting that Ed White's Ambassador of Exploration Award, recognizing the sacrifices and dedication of the Apollo, Gemini, and Mercury astronauts, should reside here at West Point, an institution dedicated to the highest ideals of our nation. Ambassador of Exploration, a title so appropriate for astronaut Edward H. White, West Point Class of 52. Thank you. We will now hear from the 59th Superintendent of the United States Military Academy. Please welcome Lieutenant General Robert L. Caslin, Jr. Thank you very much, Sergeant. Well, good afternoon and welcome to West Point. It's a pleasure to have you all here today as we honor one of our graduates and a great American for his historic achievements. First, I'd like to thank Colonel Bill MacArthur for those great remarks. Bill, thank you very much. It's an honor to have you with us here today. I'd also like to extend a special welcome to some distinguished guests that we have here today. Colonel Frank Borman, West Point Class of 1950, one of the original nine Project Gemini astronauts who was command pilot for Gemini 7 and commander of Apollo 8. Sir, great to have you with us. Miss Bonnie Bear, Colonel White's daughter, ma'am, wonderful to have you with us as well. A half century ago, space was the new frontier. We looked skyward and dreamed of flying a rocket ship to the stars. We remember President Kennedy's challenge to the nation that we would land a man on the moon before the end of the 1960s. We were fascinated by the adventures of science fiction characters like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers and a starship crew that would boldly go where no man has gone before. Every kid dreamed of being an astronaut. They were our childhood heroes. They were the new pioneers. Lieutenant Colonel Ed White was one of those pioneers that set out in this new frontier. And it was 50 years ago today that he became the first American to do what many had only dreamed of, to walk among the stars. Ed grew up in a, with a love of flight. In fact, one could argue that flying was in his blood. His father, who was a West Point graduate of the class of 1924, rose to the rank of Major General in the Air Force and was considered as a pioneer in aeronautics. He started his career as a balloon and airship pilot that would pilot various models of aircraft during his career. 
As a youth, while other kids were flying model airplanes, Ed was flying actual airplanes. Ed's dad would take him up in the old T-6 trainer and let him take control of, take, take control of the controls. Ed Jr. would say that it felt like the most natural thing in the world to do. Ed would learn more than how to fly planes as a youth. He also learned the values of self-discipline, of persistence, and single-minded dedication. Perhaps the greatest lesson he learned from his parents was this, to set a goal, believe in your heart and soul that you can achieve it, and then work to accomplish it. These lessons would go a long way in earning an appointment to West Point and following in his father's and his uncle's footsteps. As a military family, because of Ed, Ed White moved around so often, they didn't have the, a permanent residence and thus didn't have a congressman to appoint Ed to West Point. But that didn't stop him. So he, in his words, quote, went up and down the halls of Congress, knocking on all the doors. His persistence paid off and he earned an appointment as an at-large appointee. While at West Point, Ed starred as a halfback on the soccer team, excelled as a hurdler on the track team, setting a West Point record of, in the 400 meter hurdles. He would even compete for a spot in the 1952 United States Olympic track team, missing, making the team by one-tenth of a second. He would also meet his future wife, Patricia. After graduating from West Point and earning his wings as an Air Force pilot, Ed headed to Germany for duty as a pilot flying F-86 Sabres in the new F-100 Super Sabre in support of NATO. During that time, after reading an article, he decided that he wanted to become an astronaut. Remembering the lessons his parents taught him, he set a goal, believed he could do it, and then he worked to accomplish it. After his assignment in Germany, Ed earned a master's degree in aeronautical engineering, completed the Air Force's test pilot school, and reported to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio as an experimental test pilot. By this time, the seven astronauts selected for the United States' first manned space program, Project Mercury, were in training. And as a test pilot, Ed flew the large cargo planes used to provide periods of weightlessness for these astronauts in training, to include men like John Glenn, and Decky Slayton. In 1962, NASA selected a second group of astronauts for its next space program, which was Project Gemini. Nine new astronauts were selected from a group of more than 200 applicants. And among these nine astronauts were great men like Neil Armstrong and Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Ed White. After months of training, Ed was selected as a pilot for Gemini 4 with fellow astronaut Jim McDivitt as the command pilot. Their original mission plan was designed to show that it was possible for humans to remain in space for extended periods of time. Up to that point, the longest American manned flight was Gordon Cooper's 34-hour Mercury flight in May of 1963. McDivitt and White's mission was scheduled to last four days. About three months before Gemini 4's launch, a Russian cosmonaut became the first man to float in space. So NASA re revised the mission plan, and Ed would then be slated to perform an extravehicular activity, a spacewalk, using a newly developed suit and special handheld unit that would allow him to propel himself while performing maneuvers outside the spacecraft. This equipment was so new, it was still on the drawing board when Gemini 4's original flight plan was introduced, and wasn't certified for use in space until 10 days before launch. But Ed was determined. He set a goal to be the first man to propel himself, not just simply float in space, and he spent countless hours practicing in a pressure chamber preparing himself for the mission. Finally, after months of preparation, White and McDivitt boarded Gemini 4 and lifted off on the morning of June 3, 1965. Less than five hours later, as Gemini 4 orbited the Earth passing above Hawaii, Ed White left the confines of the spacecraft and took his first step on the historic walk in space. For the next 20 minutes, millions of people back on Earth were glued to their TVs and radios, listening to White and McDivitt conduct their mission. Ed would describe feeling very little disoriented or sensation of speed, even though Gemini Ford was traveling at more than 17,000 miles per hour above the Earth. Ed used his handheld propulsion uh, unit on his walk until it ran out of fuel, and then he relied on his tether to maneuver himself 
all the while capturing spectacular images of the Earth on his camera. Soon the flight director ordered White back into the spacecraft and America's first walk in space came to a close. White commented, I'm coming back in and it's the saddest moment of my life. Ed White achieved what he had set out to do. He became the first man to propel himself in space with his space walk lasting twice as long as the Russians' first DVA. Four days, 66 orbits, and more than 1.6 million miles later, White and McDivitt splashed down in the Atlantic, bringing the Gemini 4 mission to a successful completion. After the Gemini 4 mission, Ed was selected as senior pilot for the first flight of NASA's new Apollo program, joining astronauts Gus Grissom and Roger Chaffee. And tragically, however, on January 27, 1967, a fire broke out in the command module during a test of the spacecraft, and all three of these great men were killed. At Cape Canaveral, at the site where Apollo 1 tragedy took place, there are two memorial plaques. One plaque includes the Latin phrase, ad astra per aspera, which means a road, rough, a rough road leads to the stars. Every road to a new frontier has challenges, and space is no exception. But that road was paved with the personal character, the courage, the selfless service and sacrifice, and attributes that we try to instill here at West Point of these early pioneers. Pioneers like Ed White and Frank Borman, whose achievements are the mile markers along that road. And it's fitting that today, on the 50th anniversary of this historic achievement in space, that we honor Ed White. His legacy serves as a reminder that when you set a goal and believe you can do it, you can accomplish anything, even step out and touch the stars. In closing, I would like to thank NASA for honoring Colonel White with the Ambassador of Exploration Award and the White family for graciously allowing us to display the moon rock at the West Point Museum to serve as a reminder of his personal character and achievement and to perhaps encourage someone else to set out and plant a new marker along the road to a new frontier. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the daughter of Lieutenant Colonel White, Miss Bonnie Bayer. I am delighted and proud to be here today honoring my father, Edward Higgins White II, I would like to thank Superintendent Lieutenant General Robert Caslin and Museum Director David Reel for greenlighting this very special day. And many thanks to Jeffrey Reynolds, Brian Reka, Jesse Hernandez, Norma Normandy, Nora Normandy, Cindy Steele, and Chris Brown, and also Brett Afazian for planning, organizing, and making this day a reality. I so appreciate and thank Colonel William MacArthur, a fellow, fellow spacewalker and West Point graduate, for being here to honor my father and his accomplishments. I am also extremely pleased to have Colonel Frank Borman, a very close family friend, to share in this tribute to my dad. Thank you to my dad's West Point classmates, my family and friends who have traveled here to be here today as well. Since hearing about the Ambassador of Space Exploration Award back in 2004, it has been the hope of my brother, Ed White III, and I that we would be able to display the moon rock dedicated to my father here at West Point. As a second generation West Point graduate from the class of 1952 and a huge patriot, the importance of duty, honor, country, and other West Point ideals were some of the foundations of my father's life. As General Mac Douglas MacArthur famously quoted, these ideals would dictate what you ought to be, what you can be, and what you will be. As with everything in his life, my father stressed the importance of setting a goal, believing in your heart and soul that you can achieve it, and then working to accomplishment. accomplish it. My father had a great love and respect for West Point, and in fact had planned to return back here and teach once he had left the astronaut program. He understood the huge impact that attending a school like West Point can have on a young person's life. He wanted to be a leader and to have his life be an inspiration to others. As Walter, Walter Cronkite stated, the conquest of space and the ultimate moon landing is one of our country's finest and proudest achievements. The journey and ultimate success of the space race 
will be talked about, <coughs> excuse me, and celebrated for many years to come. <coughs> Today's date, June 3rd, could not be a more perfect day as this marks the 50th anniversary of my father's famous spacewalk. He was the first American to walk in space and the first person to maneuver using a self-propelling gun where he used his great athletic skills. The photographs taken on his historic spacewalk are some of the most <clears throat> famous <clears throat> ever taken. Excuse me. I recently watched footage of the Gemini 4 mission and I am still astounded at what NASA and Jim McNivett and my father were able to accomplish. Each of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo flights were an important stepping stone towards reaching the final goal of landing men on the moon. It is the hope <coughs> of my brother and I that by displaying <coughs> our father's moon rock here at West Point, it will give inspiration to all who view it to dream big, to reach for the stars, and to do what it takes to follow your dreams. Thank you. The NASA Ambassador of Exploration Award recognizes the sacrifices and dedication of the Apollo, Gemini, and Mercury astronauts. Each astronaut or their surviving families is presented a lunar sample, part of the 842 pounds of moon rock and soil returned during six lunar expeditions from 1969 to 1972. An inscription describes the rock as, a symbol of the unity of human endeavor and mankind's hope for a future of peace and harmony. At this time, General Caslin and Mrs. Baer will unveil Colonel White's Ambassador of Exploration Award, which the White family has graciously loaned to the West Point Museum to serve as a reminder of Colonel White's achievements and his historic spacewalk. <clears throat> 